Hi. Sejin here. Today we will talk about Lady Lapis. One of the forgotten heroes who dominated the early arena and Colosseum. In this video, we will be going have an overview of her profile. Stats. Ability. Equipments. Team composition. Her performance on PvE and PvP. If you are new to my channel, make sure to click the subscribe button and hit that notification bell. So you will never miss any future updates. With that being said, then let's start. Let's start with her profile tab. Lapis is a unique hero with three evolution stages. It means you need to spend 1160 evolution stones to max her evolution, and 700 evolution crystals to max her limit break. Hero information. She is 170 centimeters in height. Weighing 53 kilograms. Her role is a warrior. Lady Lapis is 20 years old. She is from the human race and has a light element. Now let's read her backstory. Lapis is a lady knight from a noble family. Despite being raised in a conservative family, she was always concerned with social economic equality. She often got in trouble for her progressive views during her night training. Although she wanted to travel around the world to expand her knowledge, that was one thing her parents would never allow. To circumvent this, Lapis started her adventures by disguising herself in a fancy dress, as if she's attending snobby social events. She also developed a unique skill of masquerading weapons as harmless accessories. Because she is tall and has long arms and legs, she can attack unsuspecting enemies at distance. Now let's move on to her ability tab. Her party buff is light element attack plus 40%. It means her synergy can be beneficial only for light element team. She also has weapon skill regen speed of plus 6%. This is her stats compared to commonly used heroes in the arena today. Her compatible equipments are one-handed sword, shield, and accessory. Her normal attack is called Thousand Needles. She will stab enemies with incredible speed, and the stabs level up and become stronger over time. It levels up up to level 3. Her chain skill is called Giant Umbrella. It is down to airborne. It shoots a giant umbrella that inflicts 360% of her DPS. Her special ability is called Swiftness. When she received hit from enemies, her movement speed and attack increase by 30% for 5 seconds. Now let's go to her equipments. For her accessories your best option will be Mirror Earring of Faith. It has good defense on max limit break compared to other options like Minotaur's Necklace. The best sub-option stats you need to consider are HP, Defense, Skill Damage, and Weapon Skill Regen Speed. If you don't have Mirror Earring of Faith then go for Minotaur's Necklace. You can buy it in Camazon with 600 battle medals. For her shield, your best option will be Captain's Mirror Shield. It can grant you stats of plus 15% light element attack. You can buy it in Camazon with 3000 mirror shards. If you don't have Captain's mirror shield, Advanced Shield will be a very good substitute for her shield. For her cards. Use one attack and one HP card if your tank have HP synergy like Marina. Your HP card will stack effect with Marina synergy for higher HP multiplier. The same way with defense card, used it if you have defense synergy in your party. Now let's go to her exclusive weapon. Her exclusive weapon is called Innocent. It is an epic one-handed sword. It has 2423 to 2661 DPS on max limit break. The main options are light attack of 748 to 821. Crit hit chance plus 8%. Shield increase on battle start plus 5%. HP plus 14%. Weapon skill regen speed plus 10%. Innocent unique ability for Lapis, it increases the attack range of her Thousand Needles. She can also jump start the Thousand Needles from level 3 right after using skills. It also has weapon skill level plus 4 for Lapis. Innocent has only sub option of plus 8% on defense. Her weapon skill is called Stinger. It has attack of 190% DPS and regen time of 7.5 seconds. She stabs enemies in a fabulous fashion and putting enemies in down state. If you don't have Innocent, Holy Sword is a very good substitute. You can buy it in Camazon with 1,805,000 gold. Now let's go to team composition. Your best mono team will be Lapis, Aisha, Zoe and Eugene. It has party buff synergy of plus 40% light element attack. Plus 36% on HP. 
plus 30% weapon skill regen speed, and plus 50% melee attack. This team has very high DPS due to melee and light attack synergy. If you don't have Eugene then you can use Captain Eva. It has party buff synergy of plus 40% light element attack, plus 36% on HP, plus 30% weapon skill regen speed, plus 22% defense, and another plus 14% to light attack. This team is very good in guild raid due to high light element attacks. Now for her mixed team. Lapis is very hard to use in a mix because of her synergy party buff. So for mixed team, you can use Eugene, Marina and Lupina. It has party buff synergy of plus 40% light element attack, plus 50% melee attack, plus 40% on HP, and plus 27% crit hit chance. This team has very high DPS and elemental attacks. It can be very good in high level dungeons and boss fights. You can also build Lapis in a team like a tank, and this will be your arrangement. It has party buff synergy of plus 50% melee attack, plus 25% crit hit chance, plus 40% light element attack, and plus 70% on range defense. This team will be the current meta destroyer. I will explain it later when we reach the PvP topic. Now let's go to her PvE performance. Lapis is a beast in PvE. With her thousand needles, even the toughest enemy boss will go down. Let's watch this clip from GCTV channel. This is Heavenhold Tower level 55, and she is fighting the final boss. If you want to watch the full video, I will put the link in the description box down below. Now let's watch this clip from Black Sheep channel. Do you remember this final boss in Eugene's event? It is very hard to clear using any heroes, but for Lapis, it is very easy. Now let's go to her PvP performance. Her biggest weakness in the arena is her vertical and horizontal attacks. She was very vulnerable with diagonal attacks from the enemies. Also her skill is very hard to hit running enemies. You need to master her playing style before considering using her in arena. I have found two players that is very good at controlling Lapis. They are both playing in Korean server. If you want to watch the full video, I will put the link in the description box down below. This first video is from Tabbad. He is using full monolite team in the arena. As you can see, Eugene's damage is very huge because of Lapis Energy. In this round, Eugene died, but she managed to deal almost half of Marina's HP. He made a mistake here. Do not fight Tinia when you get that symbol in your head. Tinia users always shoot that arrow first before they spam normal attacks. That arrow is very easy to dodge. Just move around first before fighting her. As you can see, even Captain Eva deals very huge damage because of her synergy. Now let's watch this video clip from Lapis channel. In this clip, he is using Lapis as box collector. What is a box collector? It's a strategy in the arena where you will fight with a tanky character first to collect buffs from the boxes. This is to make sure that your next two character will be stronger to defeat the enemies. Now let's go to Colosseum. This is the current meta in the Colosseum today. Meta team had two tanks on the front and DPS in the back line. They have a very good wall to block enemies from killing their DPS. They usually use Earth Element for DPS, because they are aware that many players are using Marina as a tank. If they kill Marina first, enemies team will fall down very fast. Now let's talk about this meta destroyer team. 
As you can see these heroes are directly counter for this meta team. Let's start with Lapis. Lapis can disable Agma's passive of reflecting damage and easily kill him because of his element. Lapis also have very long range, reaching the enemies in the backline and inflict damage to their DPS characters. Next is the Golem Rider Aleph. Aleph is an earth hero made to counter Marina and has range defense synergy. Aleph can kill Marina quickly in a hand-to-hand -hand battle. Aleph also has plus 70% range defense on his party synergy. It means that this team will endure more damage coming from enemies DPS. Now let's talk about Eugene. Eugene has 30% movement speed and range defense on her special ability. Combined with Aleph's range defense synergy. Eugene has overall 100% range defense in this fight. She can also dash forward to the enemy's backline using her weapon skill. She can kill Bari and Tinia easily when she lands on the back. Eugene has synergy of 50% melee attack that will boost team DPS output. The last one is Akeuki. Akeuki is a fire hero. It means she will have 30% more defense from their earth element DPS. Akeuki can also dash forward to the enemy's backline using her normal attack. She has plus 25% critical chance. Providing multiplier for this team DPS output. In conclusion, Lapis is a very good character when it comes to PvE. She can also be viable in Arena and Colosseum if you know how to control her properly. That's it for now, what do you think of Lady Lapis? Please let me know in the comments section. If you like this video consider to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. If you have questions or contents that you want me to do next please comment down below. Have a wonderful day.